interesting uh, aspect of market research which is emerging as a very strong area which is called as experimentation what do you understand by experimentation yeah what is experimentation practical okay has some results okay right experimentation find something at the end of the result at the end of the experiment example in chemistry you had experience right so what is to happen in the experiment a result which is to prove this is equal to if you do this this happens that's why experimentation is becoming very common okay where marketers want to know whether if i do something something will happen right clear so experimentation is a emerging field which is being used more and more because today it is becoming feasible again because of access to technology etc right so let's look at experimentation per se it is a scientific method employed in a marketing research it involves creation of a contrived or artificial situation so that the researcher can manipulate one or more variables right and then you see the impact of those variables which are monitored which is the most commonly used experimentation any example in a very small test market test market is also experimentation you see whether a drop in price will lead to increase in sales and how much in some other test market you could drop let's say by 10% in some other market by 5% and see whether they correlate so whether a drop in price could lead to increase in sales if the drop in price does not lead to increase in sales will you actually apply it the answer is obviously no but the drop in price does increase the sales by what you wanted then you actually can take a decision that's a classic example of a drop in sale uh, i mean uh, uh, experimentation right so today experimentation is becoming more and more common let's say with flavors with sizes with packs with uh, combinations okay so some of the taste color etc soft drinks is tried out you know whether this will attract more let's say in soft drinks what has happened in the last 4 5 years in terms of experimentation shapes have changed drastically today right so many of the soft drink bottles every 6 months you see some new shape no? so they are trying to experiment whether it will work or not right even without us knowing they are making minor changes in the taste sugar concentration let's say the uh, concentrate which gives a taste here they are changing it and see whether it's working right what is the natural experiment is where uh, nature itself takes experiment so this is not a part of marketing research he so what is done is to really see whether a experiment works or not you tend to also have controlled experiments where you try to keep all other parameters same and change only few variables right if you really want to experiment to be successful you also need what is known as a control group what is a control group a control group is one where there is no change done you know the experiment group you change something and give it and obviously between the control group and the experiment group if there is a change you can say this variable is causing that change right so when you choose the variable you have to be sure whether that variable is independent or dependent you can control it or it is extraneous right so let's look at some formats for variables you know
So again these experiments can be done in a lab or actually on the field. In the lab you have concept test. Any idea what is a concept test? Hmm? What is a concept test? Hmm. So description, right? And then people ask, would you buy this concept, right? Clear? Then you have actual lab taste, whether this tastes better or that tastes better. Many people are also invited to look at advertising. Then you have simulated test markets. Then you have package tests. Which package looks attractive, more attractive, color, size, combination, features, right? In the actual marketing field, you get into store audits. Many times you are asked to use a product free of cost and give a feedback. That's a home use test. You could have test markets, which is also becoming very common. And you have also on air advertising testing, where people are randomly called after ad, did you watch it? And if yes, what was your reaction? Did you remember it? Etc. Etc. Now, what are the typical types of uh, experiments? There could be a after only design. So, you don't have a pre and post, you have only after design. So, there would be an average measure that is already there in the market. So, after you introduced, uh, let's say, a price change, if there is a change, you assume it is because of the price change. Before, after, you would actually take readings before the experiment and after the experiment. So, X1 would be before the experiment, X2 will be after, X2 minus X1 will be the difference. Okay, you could also have a before after with a control group. What is the control group? They are not given the experimental dose, whatever, or the variable. Okay, so this will be the change in the readings. So there will be an experiment group. Their readings will be x2 minus x1 and control will be y2 minus y1. Overall difference will be the result of the experiment. Break the division. Hmm? I mean, after break the part of the Okay, this is what I mentioned uh, earlier which is started to come in India where customers or families will be asked to give a diary of their usage, right? So typically uh, the experimental designs are of these types, okay? So let's, uh, before I hand over to Chaitanya for the next topic, uh, let me just quickly tell you about a test market. Okay, uh, test marketing is one of the most popular uh, applications of experimentation, right? It is routinely done in cars, okay? It's routinely done for cars, two-wheelers, four-wheelers, 
even uh, commercial vehicles, right? Now, till recently, Bangalore was one of the most popular test markets, simply because Bangalore met practically all these conditions. Okay, it was large enough to give meaningful positions. Most important, the demographic was fairly well distributed, right? And you had all types of people there consuming all sorts of products because it was a cosmopolitan sort of. That's why it was representative of the behavior of consumers also. Consumption also mirrored, it was not extreme in climate, etc. It was moderate. So throughout the year, you could make a favorable thing. And it was also very favorable to the media usage. Pune was the second choice for test markets, right? Today, but cities like Jaipur, Indore are also becoming test markets because Pune, Bangalore are now becoming saturated. People are now aware that hey, test market they quickly come to know also. And then the uh, behavior becomes modified. Right? So what are the steps? Define the objectives, your approach, procedures, markets. Again, you could have three markets, a standard, controlled or simulated. So this is a broad uh, strategy. Typically used for new product development, research on new exciting products. Okay. And today, no company would dare take a risk before test marketing. They would not launch a major product. Okay. Uh, I think we have time in market search for these topics. Market research is what? For you, a 35 hour subject. So we'll try to cover basics. Okay. Now, Chaitanya will take over and give you some inputs on product and uh, brand strategy. So, um, okay. So, what the objective was? We are trying to figure out what should be the color of uh, or the background color for our website. Okay, that was the intent with which we are working. And the whole idea behind a website was to create something which is of ease. Okay, so if you look at the, uh, so we are trying to figure out what people. And uh, these are the results. So most of them said that okay, white is the color which they associate with the ease. Okay, that's how we selected white color should be the black. Okay. The other thing what we are trying to find out was uh, we are working with a company for uh, they are uh, trying to develop a product, okay, a service for a people who are going back to India. So those are the Indians who want to come back to India. Okay. So for them we made a detailed questionnaire. It was a primary research intention. 
and obviously it cannot be with the single person it has to be with the family so we created uh, this questionnaire for a bread earner and homemaker so bread earner could be a male female okay but homemaker primarily for in indian context is a woman okay so these are the two things which i thought to show you now i'll move to the product and brand management okay uh, how many of you can actually figure out difference between a coke and a pepsi no okay i'll leave apart packaging if i give you coke in one jar and pepsi in one jar can you figure out what 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 is that test can you explain what is the difference between a coke and pepsi on some parameters to keep you associate with the brand okay similar to mineral water okay bisleri i mean you you go and ask to the shop guy okay give me bisleri and he he will give you any other brand you will accept it right so that's a branding which we will be talking about okay so what is a i would say duty of an uh, typical sales and or i would say marketing guy in a company it is to create communicate and deliver to the market at profit the profit is the most important aspect what every company will look for okay but what is required is to create a product to communicate its worthiness and to deliver okay so what does create means a product management communicate is a brand and deliver is a customer management so we'll be talking about product management and brand management for this particular session okay what is a product can this be a product yes can this lecture be a product so anything which can be offered to the customer it can be a product okay i mean if you have to define in a way that's a any offering by a company to a market that serves satisfy customer needs and what so this is a product it can be object service or it can be an idea as well okay so you might ask me why new product development is featuring here because that's a question of r&d right but what is most important is what are the inputs on which the r&d is designing a product okay because designing a product is a technical job but the feature assessment and what customer want is something marketing will come up and tell you okay so how many of you uh, okay let me put it this way how many new products you have seen in last one year new product can you name okay but uh, okay to i i can i can buy that uh, thing but uh, is it a new product or something else new entrant right okay new product could be tata s it created a segment in it itself okay new right no no or maybe a flipkart there was nobody who was offering that particular product they came and did okay so i am putting 10% but even that number is less than 1% okay okay some 
success rate of new products i mean if you, uh, my okay uh, let me be frank with you i come from automotive background so my most of the uh, examples will be from auto okay but the success of new product is very very less why maybe because the product itself is not worth it's not rightly priced it is not rightly targeted so there are many aspect okay but this is the reality 5% of the products are actually actually we say that uh, are successful okay uh, maybe before 90 okay uh, before 2000 okay how, oh let's say 2010 how many years a individual used to use a cell phone 3 to 5 years typically and now less than 1 year the moment you go and buy the phone come back home you realize that there is new model which is launched right the life cycles are becoming short what is the implication is companies need to make sure that within a short span of time they should generate money okay they they are quite sure that 2 saal ke baad ye product nahi bechne wala hai right so the biggest example is iphone 5 which was released in 2013 okay and iphone 7 is released now okay within 2 year 3 2 and 1/2 years roughly it's okay within 2 and 1/2 years now they have to release a new product okay company like apple who is considered to be best brand worldwide they are releasing product very shortly so this is impacting a lot so let's look at a typical life cycle from a marketing perspective i'm not looking from the product development perspective okay so this is the time company invest okay there is no revenue as such introduction is more about creating a marketing okay growth is where you actually start realizing the numbers maturity is the tertiary tertiary requirement comes in we i mean there is no need to invest heavily on the marketing and decline so something new comes up and the preferences change okay so stage 1 is about innovation or investment the stage 2 the customers which actually comes and buy your product they are very early adopters okay so they want to try out new concept they want to understand okay what's new in the market let me invest let me try to find out how it is okay stage 3 stage 3 is early majority okay i mean for that matter product is launched one month back they know okay there are no major issues let me again try let me try now okay this is the early majority okay so early majority actually creates a opinion in the market okay so they are creating uh, word of mouth publicity and everything the sec next stage is the late majority it means people who who don't want to experiment they want something which is always proven okay and last is laggards they are simply i mean uh, laggards is a wrong terminology but at this particular stage or let's say stage 5 the product is become a commodity right so the cost must have come down so at that point people can afford so how you can relate these terms with a marketing communication which should go right because they let's say these 1 2 3 4 these are two different segments or different parts of the segment i would say okay so accordingly the marketing communication has to change which we will see sometime later okay what are the typical product development stages i mean if you ask anybody this is these are standard terms which i think we can we can move ahead okay now this is something we should look at as a mba student how do you assess a product whether it is worth going for a even a development okay customer might be okay this is a very good product but 
the moment you say can you buy or are you willing to buy this product no so this is the most important thing which should look at is customer may be okay this is a very good product but is it worth buying something which you look at so what analysis we should do is what is the typical cost of the product okay how many are likely to buy okay i mean this could be a work product this can be very well developed very easily but can can we sell in thousands no right so this typical sales volume we have to relate with our company right so this particular product you will not see uh, high volume companies are going to produce these are the typically small companies or mid size companies in the revenue range of 10 to 5 to 50 crores this is what they will look at okay pricing so pricing will have to be related to your company perception right what company want to pursue right iphone will not launch anything less than 30000 or 40000 that is very clear right still they will try to look at the segment and understand profit levels okay again iphone ex how many of you know that what is the typical cost of manufacturing for iphone 7 15000 and what price point they are selling so there i mean unwritten rule is anything contributory margin anything less than 70% is not acceptable okay so these are the company norms which company internally sets and then evaluate the idea okay and then obviously break even payback and everything will come in effect okay uh what are the different value propositions we should look at okay so i am selling this is a product okay so there are characteristics there is a value associated okay now if i am adding some feature can i charge more is more for more okay if i adding feature and costing same more for same i am charging same but reducing the features same for less i am reducing two features but i am giving this you at a 50% price same for less and more for less i mean i am adding feature but i am giving at very low cost so these are the value proposition in a product a marketing guy will look at okay so obviously out of uh, this one to not beyond that because nobody want to give more at lesser price unless competition make you to do that less for much less it is actually creating a second category of product which will go in the market and same for less i mean why you want to reduce your cost i mean why you reduce uh, margins okay but this is typically happening okay can you can you relate this particular value proposition with some products example i mean it is more for less right it is more for less right reason because of competition nobody want to do that it is because they just want to survive in the business they are doing that okay more for more <coughs> amt all cars are coming with amt features right so add feature i'll you pay more more for the same no that's not a value proposition that is a marketing uh, i would say gimmick there is no standard product which will always give you 20% extra right so no, that's a marketing thing i'm only talking about product look at the features and then cost so very good example same for less the 
best example is chipset okay so whenever a new generation chipset comes from intel or any company they'll be charging at very premium rate okay the moment the volume picks up they'll reduce okay petroleum companies are not that way because they are more linked to the uh, crude oil prices charging hey taxes is they don't charge tax government charge tax okay less for much less So primarily, most companies will look for one at the max two, not beyond that, unless compelled to do to remain in business. Okay, I think uh, we can skip this market testing. We already discuss a lot. Okay, so these are the four things we should look at when we are taking to the product market. I mean, product to the market. what when we should launch it right what is the good time to launch the product or is it a time at which market is ready to accept that product right where which geographical market right what point which market to whom what is my target market what is my target segment right and how what is my marketing strategy Okay, this is the. These are the main four questions, and a product manager will ask or uh, will be asked. Okay, in terms of product level, uh, what is my basic requirement? Is a core benefit. Okay, basic product is actually meeting the requirement. Expected is what is expected by a customer. Okay, augmented is you add some feature and then. offer it to the customer and potential product is okay this is my basic product this is what customer want and this is i can give and when you try to figure out okay what best we can offer is a potential product okay i mean at best there could be one pain area okay which we are trying to resolve with which a basic product can come but what customer want is i want 10 features and you come across and say that okay i can give you five features then we when we try to find out that subset okay we say that these are the four features what we can offer at this price so that will be a potential product i mean customer delight you go to recharge voucher and all of a sudden that guy says okay 50 rupees mein aapko 100 rupees milega that's a delight you are not expecting that to happen and you got it um or for that matter you go to railways and you find it very clean nowadays it's very clean but it it exceeds your expectation uh okay product hierarchy there is a need again there could be a product family okay for let's take an example cooking need is you need something to cook product family it could be a utensil it could be a pressure cooker it could be oven these are the product families product class within a pressure cooker there could be different class different varieties okay product line so hawkins have a product line of pressure cooker okay product type so in particular product line type uh, product line there could be a sub class which you can say a product type and it's a brand hawkins is a brand and item is a product again uh, product how do you classify okay i mean fan is a consumer durable it lasts for a longer duration non durable you go and buy dal it's a non durable it will be consumed immediately and services in if you go inside what consumer durable is convenience good i mean you go you ask for a soap you get anything you accept and go out that's a convenience good shopping goods is something you will at least do some level of research 
you go for a buying a shirt or dress you go to three two three shop then you find out okay this is the what i want i can afford i'll buy this is shopping goods speciality goods is very specific uh, for that matter a sofa or a dining table which is you will spend lot of energy in finding okay how can i customize that particular for my requirement what any idea about the unsought good Right. Unsought good is anything which is like you don't want to buy, but you are compelled to buy. Any example? Second is you go to uh, vehicle repair shop and that guy says oil change करना है. First thing you will say is जरूरी है क्या? Right? So that's the unsought good. Okay, in terms of industrial good, it could be raw material, manufactured item. Cap okay, what is capital good? capital good right which will which will last for longer duration machinery is a capital good supplies and business services those are standard okay product mix so uh, for a company okay how many product lines we should have okay I mean, we should have 10 product line, 20 product line, or or we should we focus only on two, three important. So that's a product width. Okay, length. There are 10 lines, but there are only three parallels. So that's a product length. Product depth. So in a product line, how many variants you want to sell? You want to sell something is 0.5 ton to 10 ton, or like 0.1 ton to 10 ton. So that's a product depth and consistency so what is mean by consistency is uh, your company is into 10 product but how 10 products are related to each other it's very rare to see a company which is selling a soap which is only selling a same uh, same company selling a aircraft it's not possible so you have to be an interrelated business okay I mean, obviously there should be some product line decision we should take. Okay, product translation, market translation. Okay, how many product we should sell? How many market we should remain in? Okay. Uh, any example of product uh, company which is moved out of India? Said I, uh, we are not into Indian business in India. I think Deutsche Bank or HSBC Bank decided will not do the retail banking in India. So that's the market rationalization. Okay. Uh, for that matter, uh, Tata Motors is trying to do the product rationalization. For a Tiago, they are not selling it for the taxi business. So they are trying to re-segment themselves. They are trying to rationalize their products. Okay. Again, product line. How should we? How long we sh that length should be? How short? And line pruning. So uh, we'll have to cut down something to make sure there is space for others. This is typically happening with the uh, Maruti Suzuki. They are not they're the uh, for the Alto desire. They have to actually cut down production. They they are trying to reduce the focus and push focus on Baleno and other vehicles, which are going at very fast rate. Okay, now moving to uh, a brand management. So, what is right? Uh, Xerox is right or photocopy is right? Photocopy. But still, you go and say, "Like Xerox, they do, right?" So, Xerox is a brand. 
it's a company but the brand has gone beyond a brand is trying to cover entire segment okay for that matter some year back you will go to shop and say buy a parle de you'll not say biscuit you'll say parle right that's a brand okay what is a brand brand is a set of tangible and intangible benefit they obtain from product and service that's a brand okay it's a seller promise if i go and market i see product and then i can say okay if product is coming from x company it must be good that's a brand may or may not be good that's a different story right so in a way what you can say is what customer thinks what is the reputation of a company in the market okay and what customer mentally thinks about that product i mean the moment you see maruti suzuki you immediately say it's a value for money okay that's a mental short hand which we have developed over years a customer has developed not a company for that matter and universally volvo is known for safety harley davidson freedom and parley bisleri i mean you can very well say sony picture quality philips innovation so if you look at the philips all ads they will end with the innovation word so they are trying to associate themselves with the innovation so in a way what you can say is a brand shows what focus company is trying to do okay what is the company's focus area that's a brand okay so this this slide talks about where product ends and brand starts so these are the attributes and functional benefits which are related to product okay and emotional benefit and relation experience is this brand okay so what do you think product is a longevity product has better longevity or uh, brand obviously and it creates longer duration to create a brand than product so that is why brand management is a specialized branch in a market uh, management okay so do you know what is the difference between house of brand and branded house i mean you you look at the two boxes one box and another box can you tell me what is house of brand and what is branded house house of brand and other kind of brand okay and branded house is the picture is different okay can you name this company no no which company have this brand hindustan unilever right and this company is a brand so they, what no matter what they sell they will sell as a tata brand okay i mean the reason they can do is they have developed a brand so the moment you you read a tata word you say it's a good brand it's a loyal brand right so that's the reason they can sell vehicle with tata name steel with tata services with tata even tea okay but these guys reason being they cannot say anything on hindustan unilever is if you look at closely there are at least 3 to 5 soaps right for example life boy lux pierce these are soap you cannot say hindustan liver one soap soap number 1 soap number 2 soap it has to be a brand because this particular soap is targeted at different customer segments okay so this is a house of brand and this is a branded house okay clear any doubt if you have any question feel free to ask okay okay what is the reliance is it a branded house or i am talking about reliance industries branded house or house of brand okay how many of say house of brand okay how many for branded house they sell anything on reliance name right there could be a product category reliance vimal but 
Reliance World has to come. Even with Reliance Geo, it's a Reliance Geo. It's not Geo, right? How about Samsung? Same. ITC. How many of you know about ITC? How so, Brian? Because they have a all together extreme end uh, businesses. On one side, they sell cigarettes. On the other side, they, they are an IT company. They are a all together different company. The reason it has become a branded house is uh, from 2000 onwards, it happened that they were trying to create a different image. So that was the reason they came up with a new brand and they become a branded house. Google, branded house. No matter what they do, it's a Google product. Okay, uh, what's the similarity, or what's the connection between Peter England and Aditya Birla? It's a brand of Aditya Birla, right? So Aditya Birla is again a branded house. Sorry, house of brand. I'm sorry. Reason being, they are into again different businesses. They are into mining, they are into metals, they are into sugar, everything. That's the thing. Now, the, okay, there is no standard rule as such that if you are in 10 businesses, you should be a branded house or house of brand. It is up to the company how they want to create a brand. Okay? But it is always better if you are into 10 businesses, better to have different brands. Okay? It reduces some element of risk. Okay. What is a brand equity? I mean, don't read here. Come on. In reality, it's not true. In India, it's not true. But, but, okay. In a clear cut layman term, what you can say brand equity is whenever a customer goes to market, you will say, give me product of this particular company. That's a brand equity. I'm sorry? Attachment, right? I mean, if you have some good phone, then you can proudly showcase that this is the phone I use, right? And that's a brand equity, okay? And most important thing is difference between the perceived value and intrinsic. Perceived value is something which you feel about it, right? It's not something which is actually giving. Again, coming back to iPhone example, they are charging heavily and 99% of the users are not using beyond surfing, browsing, food. There are many features which are not at all used, right? But still they feel that, okay, I'm getting best value out of it. Brand power, again, right? I mean, when there is a, we can say power is associated with the brand, customer will change brand for price reason, not, no, right? Customer is satisfied and no reason for change. Customer is satisfied and would take pain to get the brand. Have you read a news uh, during iPhone launch, iPhone 7 launch, a guy flew from Bangkok to Perth or somewhere in Australia uh, he sat outside of the shop for 18 hours and bought that product. So that's the attachment with the brand, right? Customer values a brand and sees it's a friend, right? Okay, what it gives a competitive advantage, I mean, we are virtually reducing a marketing cost because customer is actually asking you to sell the product, right? Plus trade relevance. I mean, uh, if you go in the market, I mean, if you go to your supplier, say that, okay, this is my brand value. You give me raw material at lesser cost. So that's the leverage. Or you go to the, um, your distributor and say that, hey, tomorrow onwards, I'll give you only 8% more, not 10%. That's the leverage you will get. You can charge very high price. You can easily launch brand extensions. So iPhone was a brand extension. 
there was a high pad that's how it, it extended and you can take on price comp i mean you need not to go into price competition at all okay so how do you manage the brand brand equity how do you improve the brand equity so what are the elements brand awareness it should be known to everyone perceived quality so whole segment should say that this is a good product it's a best quality product then brand loyalty so customer should come to your company again and again for the same product brand identity it should have its own identity okay and association what time is it we have time what are the i mean again same thing with different thing what are the advantages brand parity okay what is mean by parity is you go to market you ask for something you will get something and you go away okay this is typically happening with this particular product but now they are also becoming smart they are offering you something extra so mineral water distilled water going something beyond uh, flavored water and everything so that way they are trying to create a value so this is extremely detrimental for a company okay the moment they see that okay customer goes to market and they are okay with any kind of product you should immediately look at what is going wrong okay umbrella brand okay i mean you must have seen marriott company right so no matter what they do they will put marriott brand as such associate there is no harm in doing it's perfectly good strategy only thing is if something happens with the parent brand it is likely to impact everything right so any example nestle but again nestle they were selling with different names nestle maggi noodles other things king fisher right but the the other brand was so much i would say they it had so much equity and kingfisher beers and everything so it, it hardly harmed right okay how about the naming a brand it should carry a product benefit it should feature some level of product quality it is easy to pronounce should be distinctive should not have poor meanings or in other language and country this is most important thing. okay so any any good example which is very small extremely good golden dash fresh so very long name hola it's a spanish word hola so they are considered hola or oyo rooms oyo doesn't have any meaning but still they came up with a small name which they could attach it okay uh, let's talk about a brand strategy so there are different ways in which brand can be extended or something like that so line extension is existing brand extended to new sizes in existing product category so you have a 10 i mean you have a brand there are three products you add two more that's the line extension brand extension is you have a product line which is associated with the brand and you are using same brand name for other product so that's a brand extension multi brand new brand i mean you have a product line with some brand you introduce similar product line or same product line with different brand any example this particular thing Volkswagen so for a parent Volkswagen has multiple brand no Volkswagen Skoda which are competing to each other but they are still in the same business Honda City Honda City uh it's a brand right so they are coming up with different versions which we'll talk about it. 
but Honda City uh, may not be a right, but Volkswagen or General Motors. So they have a Chevy brand, they have a GM brand, uh, Chrysler. So different brands, similar product in same market. Okay, uh, new brand, new product in different product category. Mm. No, Volkswagen is a brand, right? But Volkswagen company holds multiple brands. Skoda is again a Volkswagen group company. Multi-brand. Right. Co-brands. So brands bearing two or more well-named co-brands. Uh, how many of you, you may not be using credit cards, but do you know uh, who is working with SBI for credit card? General Electric is working with SBI for credit card. Okay, it's nowhere it is appearing, but uh, there is no access co-brand I could think of. Mm. Maruti Suzuki is a co-brand because it was a not right. See, uh, if you look at um, some of the washing machine ads currently, mm. what are they showing? Washing machine. LG and Ariel. So, two companies coming to create a more stronger process. Okay, brand repositioning. Why it is required? There is a brand, but still after some years you feel that we need to reposition. Why? Why we need, I mean why company feels that there is, the point of sustenance has come? Customer preference changes over time, right? So we need to again reposition that brand. Uh, Skoda has done very successfully in India. If you go anywhere in Europe, Skoda is like Maruti. It's a, it's a very cheap car. But when it comes to India, they are positioned very nicely that it's a mid-segment car. Right? Uh, any, any, any example of brand repositioning recently? So they have completely changed it, the, the way in which uh, advertisement. advertisement happening and